So I'll make a motion to open the meeting at 6.31. I second. And Mallory, do you want to read the statement? Sure do. So pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Law Chapter 30A, Subsection 18, and the Governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Hubbardston Board of Health will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and the general guidance for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found at www.hubbardstonma.us. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so despite best efforts, we will post on the town's website an audio and or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible. Whew. I'm going to be able to do that in my sleep by the time this is over. <laughs> I hope right. not. Me too. <laughs> Dreaming of it. So uh, the meeting agenda is for viewing the minutes. We actually have two sets of minutes from 527 and also the previous minutes that we had deferred. Oh, that's right. Um, but do we want to defer that and go through the update on phase two for COVID with um, Katie while she's here? Probably the best. Okay. Order. Did everyone get a copy of her plan that I sent out this afternoon? Yes. So yeah, on that plan, um, there was two boxes on the field that was, I was planning on asking you about first, but I wanted to place them on there so that way you could see where they would be going. And one is that small blue box, which would be um, Clapham, the trees from uh, Clapham. He has all those um, little tree saplings that get donated from, um, what is it, the Arbor Foundation for um, Keep Hubbardson Beautiful. And I guess he, I, I'm assuming he put them in his fridge or whatever. And they come in little baggies and they give them away at the Keep Hubbardson Beautiful Day. But obviously we didn't have that. So he was hoping that we could set up like an unmanned table at the mouth and we put a, a the, the rec field that which is that little blue box on the map and um, put a sign up, say, you know, take your tree on the way out kind of thing, like grab it on the way out. Um, so that way they can at least get planted or something because or else they're all going to die. And, you know, that's, it's, they're kind of self-contained. It doesn't really need to be dealt with or you know, they just kind of sit on a table. I could put a tent over it, obviously, so they don't cook. Um, but yeah, it would be something like that. So that was something um, I needed to ask you. And the other one was the small green box. Um, I had told um, the reptile guy not that, yeah, we just can't do that. And he asked if he could do a... Um, almost like um, everything's caged, so it wouldn't be so hands-on-y and more of an informational, because what he does is he, he is a, he takes animals that need rehoming and things like that. And he's more of an educational person on like why you really shouldn't get this monitor. You know, it's not a good idea. And mm -hmm. he tries to explain to people why these don't make good pets, but it also, um, the only way he can feed all these animals that he takes in and teach people about is to get money. So he does this on donations. So he was asking if he could set up and make it so it's a non-touchy, more educational process and maybe like like on a row so people could look at the tanks and he could still talk about them, but it wouldn't be hands-on. So I told him I would ask you about it to mm -hmm. see that's where I would place him if he could come. So, um, but everything else is pretty standard. Um, I mean, you can see it from the maps. There's not, I mean, it's, it's pretty much the same way I do every year, only much more scaled down. Gotcha. So. Anybody have any questions about the map or the proposed? Uh, I think both of those sound just fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
I just have a quick question because I was trying to find the, the picture here, the map. Yeah. What was what was this orange box? The orange box is a small is the box of where that other map fits in. So that um, where the the map of the vendors actually go is in that big orange box. This so map that goes in that orange okay. box. All right, I gotcha. So that way it's not it's, it's hard to show everything individualized when you start getting down to like ten foot, you know, fifteen foot increments. So it's easier just to subdue that and <laughs> you know draw a big box. Okay. Okay. No, I I, I was looking for the maps. Yeah. So I was trying to pay attention, but now I, I see it now. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Looks good. It looks all well thought out. And I see you have the, um, the fun state compliance form. Yeah. Yeah. I filled that out and sent that in as well. And I did send an email to every single vendor um, that states all the, um, and I did send it to Mallory as well, the, the official email with all of what is being required. You're gonna need hand sanitizer, you're gonna need masks, you know, no sampling, this, that, and the other, and everything's in there. And they got this form as well with the link so they can print it out. And I asked them to have it at their booths. Um, so they all, every single one of them got that email and I asked them to respond. So A, I know they got it, and B, whether or not they were going to attend, because some of these people, it's, these are deal breakers for what they do. So I have a few that have backed out. I have right now um, 25 booths uh, that I'm, some, most of them have said, yes, we're coming. There's a few that have said no, um, even though I have more than 25 booths on here on this, um, set, uh, cause I always throw a couple extra on just in case like a town business comes to me at the last minute. Cause I'm not gonna refuse one of our own town businesses a booth. It's just not gonna happen. You know, <laughs> we will get you, there, you know. Um, so, um, I have had a few say, yeah, I have to do samples or my people have to touch my stuff in order to sell it. It's just not going to work. So we, we dealt with them accordingly and made arrangements to either, you know, okay, then it was a donation or come next year or whatever, you know, it just, mm -hmm. we worked on that, but yeah, so I'm down to 25 vendors. Um, but that's, I still think pretty decent for this kind of circumstance, you know? Yeah. You know, like, we don't want to go for broke, but at the same time, we want to do something because we got to do, we got to start getting back into the gists of life. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And Katie and I also spoke with Chief Heron, um, and they just don't have the amount of masks needed to set up a booth and hand them out and do an educational mm -hmm. blurb about it. So they're going to pass this year. Got it. Um, Mallory um, and Katie, maybe I can go back to um, Steve Curry from the regional and see if they have extra masks that aren't committed to something. Maybe we can still get a bunch of masks. Mm. Is that maybe. something I should look into then before? If, yeah, if you, yeah, if you can get them and any hand sanitizer will gladly put out a table in the center, okay. you know, that people, so when people are walking in, they can grab this stuff. It's not, that's not hard. I can easily set up a table, but I actually need product in order to set up a table, <laughs> which is kind of hard to find. <laughs> yeah. There, the state is starting to open up and let other um, entities buy these, like, hand sanitizers and stuff. Their, their supply is starting to get a little bit replenished, so they have vendors that they're starting to sl slowly leak out to us. Um, so if I see any that come out and we'll have enough time to purchase, I'll definitely let everyone know. We did from Steve um, Curry get, I think six or seven bottles of hand sanitizer. Um, so I guess if it was like an emergency and we couldn't find any, we could have always put one or two of those out. And it smells awful. Um, so I don't know if we- Oh, it does. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's bad. We opened it up and, um, it was gag worthy. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how quite to explain it, but it'd probably be best to be used in an open air event rather than in like a clinic or a, a, a shot <laughs> when we're giving everyone shots. Um, so it, it's very, very strong. <laughs> Is it going to like wow. take your skin off your hands when you use it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Is it homemade? Uh, 
That's what we were almost wondering. It smelled like something that came from a distillery, but it all has labels on it. Um, yeah. It's just very, like, we were trying to wash it off, like, all we got it on our fingers, and it was like, woo! <laughs> I don't think we want that at the town fair and then have people try and go buy a hot dog. I know. No, that's not the right kind of hand sanitizer. No, that, it, that doesn't sound right to me. It, that sounds... That sounds it's like it's, it's got last resort. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very last. Right. Like yes. maybe the last five minutes of the fair resort. <laughs> All right, so I won't ask him for any of that. <laughs> no, thank you. But maybe well, we can ask him for masks and see yeah, if there's any yeah, available. Masks available. Yeah. All right. Maybe we can, but not the hand sanitizer. <laughs> no. Well, so do we need a motion for? accepting the plan presented by Katie for the town fair as as outlined? Uh, I make a motion that we accept um, Kate's uh, plan as outlined with including the maps and uh, the, ven the vendor information. I'll second it. All right, all in favor. Um, Colleen? Aye. Kathy? Aye. Vin? Yes. And Kate? Aye. So unanimous. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I will get all the food truck information. I have it all with their um, checks for payment and stuff over to Mallory. So that way that can, I have it all big pile for you guys. So that way. Okay. All, all right. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. Thanks. Hi. Bye, Katie. Hi, Benny. Good evening, folks. Sorry I'm late. I've been fooling around with this computer for about 10 minutes, but that's great. <laughs> Okay. I seem to want to cooperate tonight. And it says that the host has disabled the screen sharing. Is, mm -hmm. is that correct? Or is that, what am I doing with that? Yep, that's correct. Yeah. Mallory controls the screen sharing and it's I'm, disabled. Yeah, I don't even know. Someone else took the meeting up for me, so I wouldn't even know how to enable it if I really wanted. And we are uh, at the top of the agenda. We're actually going backwards, so we're going to review the minutes. Do we want to do Rietta Ranch over here? <laughs> or... Do you wanna? Is Rietta here? Do they need to be here? Do we need to just review the plan and approve it? That was a question. Are they part? Are they per, trying to participate, Mallory? Mallory? Hello. <laughs> I think I cut out. So I was just saying that I haven't gotten any correspondence from Rietta since our last meeting. But okay. I've seen that all over social media that the fog is lifting and Rietta is opening. So I don't, I haven't gotten their form from um, the state yet or Got anything it. from them at all, except for what they presented. So. Do you want to reach back out with a phone call or Kathy, do you have a contact? Uh, I think we both need to. Okay. So Mallory, if you give them a call and then... Um, I can never remember his name. <laughs> John and Raylene. Yeah. So I think I the plan was fine. I think the only thing that was missing was the uh, document, the state document, right? The state document, yeah. Okay. Command. I don't know why I can't remember it. Do, well, so here's the other question. They, if they want to open between now and the next meeting, because the next meeting is going to end up being postponed, correct? Correct. Right. They wanted to open... They want to open in like Coming. four days. Yeah. So uh, do we want to have a motion contingent on the submission of the state document and accept their plan as long as they submit that COVID state document that re that's required? Is that something typically that we can do? I... Like, Yes, so they I'm didn't. Not sure. So they gave us a short blurb about how they wanted to reopen, and they seemed pretty up on the updates that have been coming from the state. And um, I think we were just concerned about the restrooms, the trash, um, mm -hmm. how they were spacing their tables out. Um, so it's totally up to you guys. I would think that we would have to have a complete application or we'd be setting yeah. a precedent that's going to come back and bite us 
in the, in the future. If we don't have our documentation and, and complete documentation and review it. Um, it could set things in motion we don't want to have happen. Mm -hmm. They have not mailed, emailed me anything, uh, you know, individually either. So um, and then I we think sent the, we sent the email out the day after our meeting mm -hmm. um, that stated they needed, you know, the links to the two forms, the one that they print out and keep posted and then the plan that needs to be filled out. I guess push come to shove if we're going to require a full vote tomorrow's Wednesday. If we tell them that they can get it to us before noon, we can hold an emergency meeting on Friday to just do a quick vote or potentially. Sure. I don't know how we want to handle it, but it was pretty clear. I think in the last meeting that we wanted them to come back with their full plan and present it. And um, yeah, I agree. Yeah, that was okay. the agreement. So We'll wait to see what we hear and then act from there, I suppose. Okay. I'll send an email tonight and just ask for it as soon as possible. Gotcha. Thank you. That's, I think that's, I think, Ben, you're right. I think we need to hold off and not do something that's not really following the rules. Yeah. And you well, know along that line, do we also need a plan to review for the annual town meeting at the rec field? Is that going to be a it's necessary? It's not a business. Yeah, it's, not, it's not a business the and the town manager is, that, is, yeah. is following the state guidelines so i don't see the need but i don't think it's you know yeah i think we're good on that one did you see his plan ben i saw something on the website and <clears throat> I have got my little card, but okay. My, well, point, my point is, is considering the fact that the Board of Selectmen continues to say in conjunction with the Board of Health, if they want us to have that type of certification, maybe we need to see what they're, they're going to be planning. It may just be a note, may just be a, a reference to what's going to happen. I don't think we're going to contest it, but so far we haven't seen anything that they have said that we've cooperated with and you know when i disagree with it but um, um didn't ryan come to the last meeting and present something yeah ryan was, he was at the last yeah ryan was at the last meeting ben and he presented uh all of that information then and it looked fine, fine. he cut out we lost him but he was able to get most of it out. I don't think I'm just looking through the um, reopening stuff now. I don't think the meeting would qualify for those forms. So. Yep. Not that I'm aware of. Not that I, uh, he sent me a copy as well. And I did review everything he had put together for the town meeting. And it does look like it's following the state guidelines to a T. Works for me. Okay. Right. So moving on to the next item on the agenda, uh, or the first item, <laughs> review, <laughs> review the minutes from 527 and then omitted from the minutes were the uh, review of the previous meetings minutes, which were deferred. Right. And that would have been on um, 512. Yep. So has everybody had a chance to read uh, the 527 and 512 minutes? I guess I read, is I've read the 512 minutes, but not. I'm, I'll just quickly go through um, the 20, the 527. Okay, and just so that everyone knows, that 527 minutes were attached to the email that Mallory sent uh, today. Is that yeah. your name? Yeah, yeah, yeah with all the good. attachments. The one with all the attachments. Actually, June 28th at 7:05. <clears throat> and Colleen, let me know when you're done.
I don't recall any uh, corrections that were needed for the uh, <clears throat> tabled minutes. Was there anything there? Um, I had read them and they looked fine to me. So I'm all set with this. Okay. So in order, the on the May 12th minutes, are there, is there any discussion or edits necessary? Seeing none, can we have a motion to accept the May 12 minutes as written? I make Don't a motion move. we accept them. Oh, I second then. Okay. And all in favor of the motion, Colleen? Aye. Kathy? Aye. Vin? Yes. Kate? Yes. On the meeting minutes for May 27th, any discussion edits on the meeting minutes for the 27th? Seeing none, I'll take a motion for accepting the minutes as written. I make a motion, we accept. Can I get a second? second. Thanks, Ben. And all in favor of Colleen? Aye. Kathy? Aye. Ben? <clears throat> yes. Kate? Yes. All right. Moving on. Um, where are we? I we see you, Vinny. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 never, I can't get used to this format. <laughs> you got a haircut. <laughs> yeah, I got them all cut. <laughs> Best thing that's happened in three months. Isn't, <laughs> isn't it nice when you get a haircut finally? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I got a haircut after three months, finally. Oh. Good times. So uh, with the COVID update, mm -hmm. just guess a quick one on Townside. Um, so Ryan was activated um, with National Guard. He's been gone for like the last week or so. He is back. Um, being, he's in like a quarantine. You're cutting out, Mel. We cannot hear you. Within the next couple weeks. So we got that Ryan is in lockdown, or uh, and then we heard the next couple went weeks, but we missed everything in the middle. <laughs> Sorry. Mm -hmm. We. Anybody else? Can anybody else hear hear Mallory? No, no. I can't. No. Hello? Back. Can you hear me? Okay. So I don't know what you got, but Ryan is now back. <laughs> okay. He's back in action. Working from home. Yep. Okie doke. Anything else on that topic before we move on? Um, our parks have reopened, so it um, looks like they're moving forward. I saw the signs posted. There are some kids playing there today, which was nice. Um, what I got. Okay. All right. Uh, moving to failed systems, awaiting action. Ten Main Street. Nothing now. Okay. And thirty-nine. So found that information from uh, the state website about a failed system near a public water supply. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't here when the system was failed, so I don't know exactly what the Board of Health uh, did at that point, but it looks like if it's a failed system within that area of the public water, or a public water supply, that we control everything. They don't even have the option to have a somebody else say it's a pass if it, I mean, the Board of Health is the one that makes that decision. And uh, I'm not sure what it means. It, it's kind of an ambiguous statement, but. Yeah, as I read it, it, it would appear that we could essentially require an inspection from a third party, not, not chosen by the right. um, resident, if we chose. Possibly, yeah. Yeah, if it, if it turns up bad, it's the Board of Health's responsibility, not the engineers, so. Mm -hmm. It's still a concern. I think we we may try to motivate those folks to get that completed. It'd be nice to get it done. 
So once again, it's the owners of Pizza Palace that owns that property now, correct? Mm -hmm. It's their father. The father, okay. They, and they have all intentions and plans on. Um, they said they've been saving their rent income to do so. Um, and they were almost where they needed to be. They were probably looking at coming to the town for taking a little bit of money out. And then COVID happened and kind of got pushed back to the wayside. So I think once we start reopening, then I'll reach out again and see where they are in their plans and maybe we can push them along a little faster because they have until January before their two years is up. Are we getting uh, the pumping records from them? They're supposed Lauren, to pump it? Yeah, they use Lawrence septic. Lawrence sent a few back in December. I haven't gotten anything since then, but I usually have to poke and prod Lawrence um, mm -hmm. to get their pumping records. In. Um, so last time I got more. Well, in light of the motion we passed at the last meeting, I would say we invite them in to bring their plan and to sit down and discuss things with them. I think we're, we're just pushing the envelope with this one too long. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so Number 30 got the system finished in spite of COVID. So I think we got to get it over with. And this right. is a three family. There's three families in that situation. Mm -hmm. So Mallory, please um, reach out to Lawrence Pumping. We yeah. need those records. Sure. Otherwise, we're going to find them. For not submitting the records timely. And then should we reach out to the and owner? We do need, yes, yeah, we do need to meeting. reach out. They need, yep, for the next meeting. Okay. Any more discussion on 10 Main Street? All right, moving on 39, Dogwood Lane. Uh, I went out and their perk test passed and they're going to contact me uh, when they're ready to proceed. Have you gotten the reports yet from them, Mallory? He came in today. I just have the, it was Richard Stevens, right? Yes. Okay. Now yeah, I got his report. We just need plans and then we get those to map. Correct. So we're in the process. It is moving. Awesome. Okay. Anything else on 39 Dogwood Lane? Okay, moving on. Uh, open repairs or inspections and plans and review. So the first is 49 Hale Road. It's a new build house and those plans are currently with Matt Hopkinson and his review. Um, he was on vacation. He told me this on Monday that he was on vacation last week. So he didn't get a chance to do much last week, but he's back and moving forward. Okay, any open questions or discussion on 49? All right, 59, Brigham Road. That, uh, Matt Hopkinson, our engineer, denied the plan. So they have been, been working with um, the homeowners engineers to bring them to compliance. Um, again, he was out, so we really don't have that much of an update. Gotcha. Uh, any questions on that one? Okay. No. 87 Hale Road in review. Seven Hale Road. That's what the, the agenda says. Which one is that, Mal Mallory? Um, those, I believe this is a um, repair. It was an older one and the plans came in, I believe. I don't have them in front of me. Um, and Matt was looking at them as of last meeting too. I just haven't gotten anything back yet. Oh, okay. I know which one it is. Yes. Oh, perfect. All right. <laughs> I, okay, 87 Hale, we're still waiting for approval of Matt. Okay, I gotta make this waiting on Matt. All right. Okay. Seven Moose Horn Circle. That one was approved. They're good to go. Um, we're the engineer. Um, this is the condos, the engineer. I guess we're just waiting for him to get started, but he has approved plans. He's already done his application. 
Um, so he's good there. Okay. And those guys, those guys know to um, contact me directly when they're ready for inspections. Now on Seven Moose Horn Circle, that would be an opportunity, Mallory, yes. to check with the owner of that to find out the name of the president of the association so we can update the records on the condominium okay. accepting Title Fives. Okay, anything else on Seven Moose Horn? All right, 106 Princeton Road. It's a new build team. They, their review went through. Um, they haven't started to work to the best of my knowledge yet, but they have Kathy's information for our inspections when they're ready to go. Got it. And at last, uh, 30 Main Street. So 30 Main Street, um, I've been out there for um, the bed bottom the mid construction and the final compliance and uh, they've passed and taken photographs um, starting oh, two weeks, almost two weeks ago. And I took the compliance photos this morning actually. Um, it's all fine. Everything was put in according to the plans that I was aware of. And so it's now complete and a good safe system. So we're done with 30 main. Very good. Any, all right. Any other questions or comments on 30 main? All right. Moving on to open complaints. Uh, before we do that, um, I was out to um, the McKinney's property on Barry Road, 75 Barry Road. That's an open system for repair. Um, I did the bed bottom inspection today at 8 30 this morning and um so we're moving along on that repair as well it's the only one that's not on the list yeah i'll make sure it gets on there okay thank you okay mallory do you want to lead us off on the complaint list so hub house um, we talked about this one. Kathy, did you get a chance to go back and see if the signs are up? Um, so there's signs up inside, okay. but there's none outside. Um, I did talk to uh, Karen uh, with her all her concerns about the hub house uh, system. Um, and uh, the there's a, when you come into the parking lot, building, the first building's on the left and the next one is sort of straight ahead when you're pulling in there. And her concern is that the, the folks, the men who live in the building that's straight ahead um, are not wearing masks. Um, and that the maintenance guy is only taking care of the handrails um, once a week instead of daily um, and her concern is there's also um, no signs on the exterior of the buildings they didn't bother to put them out there to notify UPS and FedEx and everybody else that stops by to follow the COVID procedures um, which they should be doing just because it's their business policy right. however there's nothing posted um, and her other concern is that there's a number of, um, I guess, like window style air conditioners and um, a couple of the residents have complained of mold and the manager who actually works for HUD, um, the managing company is RCAP in Worcester, but this is a HUD housing project. Um, they're not doing anything. So, I think that it's a lot of headaches here. Um, ideally, we should probably do a full building to building inspection because we've had a complaint. And then all the managers 
in Worcester and the local office manager, uh, Liz, who's in the building randomly during the week, um, be given certified notification of um, things that we don't find in compliance. I think that's the best way to handle this uh, and the simplest way. And yet it's not simple. <laughs> I would agree. I mean, I think that there's multiple complaints, not just COVID related. There's potentially, you know, mold. And if there's not any action being taken by the property management, whether it's, you know, HUD or RCAP, it's their last line of resort essentially is the local board of health. Um, right. And that's what she's done. She's come to us. Yep. So I'd say we schedule, a, you know, schedule an inspection and then kind of just walk through it and, you know, hit on all the topics and the, the areas and see if there's something, some way to mitigate the, uh, the issues. I mean, right. You know, I also believe wow. that the housing authority in town has something to do with that. Although there may not be any members of the housing authority, it's always been very, I think it's been Dennis O'Donnell for years. And I'm not sure Dennis is still on it. But maybe we should check in with Ryan. If there is no housing authority, that might by default go to town manager or select board as well. I just, I can't recall exactly where the housing authority fit into that, but I do believe they had some influence on that situation down there. Yeah, which is fine, but I don't think it, I don't think, I think it, releases us from the obligation to do an inspection. I'm not suggesting that. It's just yeah. as a matter of courtesy that, that if they're involved in it any way, we, we can let them know. Uh, Mallory, will you reach out to Dennis O'Donnell, please? Sure. Uh, regarding this property and see what his response is to, and have him CC me as well. Sure. Uh, in regards to uh, if they are involved with um, Hub House at all anymore. Definitely can do that. And I think we, this is not in a true emergency, so I think we can plan sometime in the next 10 business days to schedule this inspection. And um, the manager, Liz, has to be there. Um, so uh, Mallory, would you reach out to Liz and find out which like Thursday, possibly of next week or Monday, the June 22nd, I could possibly help out doing this inspection. I'm getting more limited as to what I can do on dates. So Thursday the 18th uh, or Monday the June 22nd uh, would be two days that I could possibly go out. Is anyone. anybody else anybody else available on, on those days? I'm housing certified, so if you need someone else to go with you, I can definitely do Monday. Okay. All right. That would be great. So see if we can't pin her down. Maybe for Monday. Okay. Is there a time that works best for you? 8.30 in the morning before okay. I start working on the farm. I've been having everybody that works for me now come in at 9.30 so I can do all my board of health first thing in the morning. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 111 Gardner Road. Nothing new. I haven't gotten any response from either of those two. So we said at this meeting, we would send out a second letter certified, give them two more weeks and see. Yep, I think it's time to do that. Um, okay. There's no change in how it looks. I can't tell if anybody's going in or out when I happen to drive by. I don't know what's going on there. Hmm. Okay, and Mallory, you said that was 111 and 85 Gardner Road. Yeah. Same update. Nothing new. Yeah. 
Sorry. Oh, did we cut out? I think so. Yeah, yeah, nothing new on either of them. Okay. Time for certified letters. Will do. Then, um, give me one second. Yeah. Sorry, I'm jumping back and forth between documents. All right, the next one is 248 Gardner Road. I have reached out to the building commissioner to see if he'd like to schedule a joint walkthrough. Um, I have not heard anything back from him. And the last one has no address. It just says lead regulation complaint. Yes. Uh, Kathy and Vin were both emailed me in regards to a possible house painting. Um, so I didn't have much information on it. So I just put what I could there, but I also have a couple questions for the board in regards to um, how you handle lead procedures. If someone on the board is lead, lead certified or um, just kind of to get a feel on what, what, what happens when you get a lead complaint, how you guys handle it. Then uh, you want to tell what you know about the, the painting job <laughs> that happens quickly? Well, I went by a residence that was under scraping and painting and the, the house was an old house and it definitely looked, in my opinion, to be lead paint. So I checked with Kathy on our procedures and she asked me to have all the information printed and stop in to see the owner and the, and the painter. That would have been Monday of last week. Tuesday, the internet was down all day. So by the time Wednesday morning came and I was able to print the 80 copies of the regulations and read them, by the time I got to the residence, there was nobody there. The place was clean as a whistle. The house was painted. The contractors were gone and it became a moot point at that situation. So I think the procedure that Kathy outlined was prudent to stop in, explain the situation and to make sure that the, the resident owners and the painters and the contractors were complying with the lead paint law and inform them of the law and the regulations if they are not complying and hope that they come into compliance without an issue. So we had a, a false alarm basically because there was nothing we could do once it was completed. And that's just the way it goes. Thank you. Any uh, other discussion or points, Mallory? Anybody on the board led certified? No, not me. I don't think we have to be. I'm reading the regulations, the, the lead certification comes from whomever they have to get to inspect the premises to certify whether it's lead or not lead. If we have a multifamily unit um, in town or a renter tenant occupant situation and a child tests positive for lead, Board of Health definitely has a responsibility to go in and test the house. Um, for, for lead. Um, so there's a class that I don't know how often or what the state is doing right now puts on to become a certified lead inspector. Um, and it teaches you how to go through collecting samples and the steps that need to take place um, once and if you get a complaint because it's not just uh, you need to take care of it. At that point, you have a sick kid potentially and you need to go to court. Um, so I can look into the class. It's something I would definitely be interested in. Um, obviously, I don't want to be an admin for the rest of my life. Um, and my main goal would be to move towards something more health director related. So it would help me if I, if anyone else wanted to join and take the class as well. I think it would be great to have a couple of us who are good to go. That sounds good. In the meantime, I would reach out to like Westminster's Board of Health yeah. uh, if we needed some an inspector for that kind of thing. And that's Rita, right? No, it was Westminster. Is it Rita? Rita is 
food inspector at okay. Westminster. Okay, so but I don't know that she's a lead inspector as well. Okay. That I'm not sure of. But I would reach out to them first. Um, they've been real cooperative with us in yeah. I know providing we help when we needed it. Okay. And I'm sure we have um, Judy O'Donnell running, so I don't know what type of certification she has already or not. Um, so if she right. ends up on I don't board, know. Yeah, we might. We might hit the jackpot with that one. <laughs> okay. Anything else on open complaints? I see um, nothing. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Uh, it's not on there, but um, this past Saturday morning at 5 a.m., I was woken up by construction trucks going beep, 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 going backwards. And because uh, we had our windows open and uh, at 5.45, it was still making noises, and I got up and went over uh, next door. Um, they were picking up equipment from the solar project going in at Cindy and Dennis's next door to us, and um, showed them my inspector ID and asked them to shut everything down because it's not until 7 a.m. that they can make noise, and... Uh, oh, I don't know that. And it's a huge company from Shrewsbury Equipment Company, and they sure as heck do know. Um, it's very tempting to uh, ask the board. Again, it's a moot point because they did obey and stop when I asked them to, but I really didn't need to get woke up at 5 a.m. on right. Saturday morning uh, to to send them a letter and, and fine them a hundred bucks for the violation, um, which we can do. I, I just don't know at this point if it's worth it, but. I'm pretty sure that was part of the special conditions of the special permit when there was the plenty of wood issued on the special uh, permit. <clears throat> you think that, that they can come in at that early in the day? The answer is no. No, that's what I'm saying, that they, they had times that they could operate. And I, I think you're right. They, they're there right. wrongly. They should have been there at the specified time that came in on the special permit. So they, they violated it, is what I'm saying. But, right. Um, is the construction ongoing? Know. Do we want to remind them? They're, they're mostly done. Um, they were picking up a piece of equipment that they were removing. That's Typically, they're... go ahead. Is that Borrego Solar, the one, that project? Yeah. Right. Most uh, of the time, it's been fine. This is the first time that someone came in that early. Maybe if it happens again, we'll, we can reach out to the planning board because they're going to be the ones enforcing the special permit. Okay. But at least now we'll have record of it was brought up once. You went over, you spoke to them, gave them fair I warning. Have, I have photos of the truck license, the truck driver, the name of the company, everything. And it occurred on, so that last Saturday was the, uh, where are we? Sixth? June, yep. June 6th. It happened June 6th at 5 a.m. At wow. 1 so they, I think they're, I believe their house number is 147 Williamsville 147, Road. yeah. Okay. So that's, uh, that's my summary on that. Wow. So I, I, we had one to, um, sorry, I'm just making a note. Under, um, I guess um, we can do it under unexpected um, subjects too, but we did get a complaint in regards to, um, care for you, not social distancing, um, following the standard of six feet. It's a hair salon at the beginning of the, um, the shutdown and all the emergency orders. We got another complaint from the same, same individual. Um, it sounds like there might be a dispute between tenants in this building, um, but instead of coming to the Board of Health, this time she went to the Attorney General's office to just kind of let us know that hey, we got a complaint that social distancing is not taking place at Hair For You. Um, so the six feet are required 
is required, but in a situation like that, if it um, can't be done safely, mm -hmm. then they need to wear their masks. And the um, complaint didn't have anything about masks. It was just that they're not keeping the six feet apart from each other. So I don't know how we want to handle this. If you want to do a pop-in just to remind them that a mask needs to be worn or I don't, I really don't know how to go forward with this one. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think at most we'd want to pop in and remind them yeah. if if we don't really know within the context of the complaint, whether or not they were wearing masks or whether or not somebody just noticed people standing too close, which I'm not sure how you cut hair without standing really close to somebody. Right. Um, if they're wearing their masks, there's no basis for the complaint. But I do think that, you know, we can just pop in and say, you know, we were made aware of the complaint and just, you know, just want to reiterate, make sure you're wearing your mask so that's not an issue and, you know go from there and it, it, we've had a lot of kind of tit for tat back and forth complaints from that property so I, I think you're right Mallory I think it might be a you know a tenant a little contention problem. going on Lo locals can clashing people too yeah. close too much home too much being in the same spot for too long right <laughs> so uh you know I don't know if anybody wants to volunteer or if anyone's real close or stops by that uh, what's it called location or no you know. here for you yeah I don't know is it right on Main Street yeah it's right on Main Street it's in the um hub town market oh Plaza. okay it's in the house you go around the behind the back part of the white house where the strip the little plaza is and the entrance is at the back the White House. It's right at the front of where the diner and the market is and Giacomo's and all that. I won't be back in town until I'm not coming in. My mother-in-law who watches my kids had a little procedure done, so she's not watching them tomorrow. Um, but I can probably swing in on Thursday if no one else is available to do so. Yeah, that would be able... awesome. Yeah, I wouldn't get to it until next week that. at all. I can do that. Thanks, Mallory. No worries. And she was very nice when I spoke with her in regards to the last complaint. She had all of her facts straight, so I'm sure it's just us having to do our due diligence. It happens. All right. Anything else? Not on open complaints. All right. And no nothing for the nurse's report? There's really not much to uh, We haven't had any new cases. We still have one active case. Um, it's been on for some time, so that just means they're not getting a negative test result when they're going back. Um, so, I mean, checking in, we get the report in from our nurse daily. I did, if you looked at the financial, we got a statement from MPHN. Um, so far we've used, well, as of that statement, we've used about four hours of their time at $50 an hour. Um, so we're up about $200. That went until March. Obviously we've used some more of their time until March, but it doesn't look like we're gonna exceed the MPHN budget. Um, if we do, I've already let Ryan know, this is something that can be attached to the CARE, the CARES Act. Um, so if we need to pay for additional services for our nurse, uh, we can put it through that act. But right now, uh, we still have a credit. Very good. Yeah. All right, moving on to old business, uh, food inspections. No additional ones completed. Your thermometers did come in, so they're in the office. Um, okay. There's two of them there. That's great. Okay. So Mallory, will you be in the office Thursday for a little bit then? Yeah, I'm gonna try to get there for like nine and probably do a whole day if possible. It all depends on my, my older girls will be home doing their school and stuff. So unless there's an emergency, I should be there most of the day. Okay, so I'm gonna stop in and get the masks and I'll give you all the paperwork I've been accumulating in my folder. <laughs> Perfect, and I have some, I know we've been doing the docu sign, but I have some stuff that we can put some hard signatures on too. So that will be, that'll be good. Okay. Um, I'll be there right at nine-ish. 
Okay. If you can't make it right at nine ish again. I'll let you know. Yeah, let me know. Um, I'm trying to have the employees come a little late so that I can get this done first thing in the morning. Sure. Okay. Gotcha. And um, the only other thing on food inspections is scheduling. So I don't know, Kathy, if you clicked the link, you should have gotten an email invitation for a link to the Board of Health member two calendar. Um, that's on the Chromebook and yeah. I can't get to work. Ah, so okay. you, I will so, bring the Chromebook in Thursday, um, Mallory. Okay. And maybe I can get, she can, maybe it's, I, I'm just doing something wrong, I'm sure. Yep. So, so you also don't necessarily have to have the Chromebook to access the email. Just so you know, you can, okay. you, you can access that email address by going to adding, uh, going to a new account on any internet browser. And then you okay. can access all the services related to that account, just so you know. But okay. at some point, um, if you want to throw things on the schedule, I'll uh, try to see what, when I overlap with you and when I have availability. Okay. Um, and the last thing about food inspections that I'd open question about has to do with um, overflow. So at what point, what's our target date to get these done by? And if we can't calendar them out by that date with the two of our, our, you know, our availability between the two of us, do we want to outsource some of them to, um, I can't remember her name. <laughs> Rita at Westminster. Rita uh, at Westminster. I thought it was it. the woman in Gardner. Jennifer it's, Susan, right? Yeah. She's not in contact with us since December. Okay. We can't contact her at all. So I'm assuming she's not available. She's not, she had not replied for three months uh, by phone or email. Okay. But I just so think we should put a, we'll, yeah. a target date on it and see what we can get done and if we need to get, if we need a to outsource. A month from now? Work. About a month from now? The middle of July? Would that be fair or not? I mean, I think so, considering we're just all starting to reopen. We're, you know, so mid -July we'll have target. the quickies to do at the town fair in June as well. Yeah. Okay. And um, those will be done in the one pager, so they'll be. Yeah, they'll be easy. It's not a problem, but. Okay. Um, trash hauler regs. Those are still on hold. Anything to discuss there? Nothing new. Okay. Recycle center. What's new there, Mallory? So I have been contacting dumpster companies trying to get a quote and I have not heard back from a single company. Um, I've contacted about five local ones, left messages, sent emails, um, DNI, DNI, Manad not finally got back to me and the rep there said she's gonna have to talk to a supervisor. Um, so I don't know if we're gonna have a dumpster for this weekend. Um, I think what do we usually put in it? Just the mattresses? Mm, there are other things typically too. I mean, anything that's not able to be broken down into salvageable materials, you know, okay. is usually put in the dumpster. So I'm trying my best to get one there for this weekend, but nobody has, I'm just not been having any luck. I know we got one from our personal residents at home and they were back, back logged because everyone's doing clean outs right now because they're all home. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just going to keep plugging away at the dumpster. I'm going to have my husband run over or, or maybe I'll do it Thursday morning real early. I have, I've changed to um, recycling companies and, and trash pickup companies. I have two old trash cans that I was going to take over so they could put small stuff in for this weekend. Um, and they're just your regular size trash bin, bins that uh, the companies pick up but um, and use with their automatic machines. But at least they'll have, we'll have two regular trash cans there for some stuff. Right. Um, Kath, I you, was, don't, you don't need to run those over. I'm volunteering this Saturday. I can just pick them up from you. Oh, okay. Thanks. I'll put them in That'd my truck. That'd be awesome. Okay. Okay. Easy. Great. 
The other thought is that um, Mallory got the Barry transfer pricing. It's one of the attachments today um, for taking in um, mattresses and furniture. And I'm wondering if we want to encourage Hubbardston residents to take furniture and mattresses to Barry this year. And uh, the other items, the metal items, the tires and such, we could still accept because we have a dumpster for all of that stuff. Um, but maybe the furniture and mattresses, we can encourage everybody to go to Barry. Um, so how do you plan on doing that? Do you want to, I mean, so we're going to put this on the website. Right. That would have to go up on the website. Yeah. What about, um, do we want to print something up about where people can recycle things, including does, Barry? Does Barry know. take stuff from other towns? Yes. We do. Okay. And then, yeah, they, so I'm assuming you don't mean if people show up at the recycle center with a chair or love seat that we send them away, right? Not this time. No, we can't do that this time. Okay. Okay. How do we determine the, so I was looking at our price schedule and the only thing I could see were for upholstered items or anything like that was for a mattress. So how do we determine what we charge a customer when they show up with an item like a chair or a couch, love seat? How do we determine what they're being charged? Is it? That's a good question. Maybe a question for Bella. Bella. I think we're gonna have to ask Bella that one. Yeah. Okay, yeah, because I was just looking at the comparison between berries right. and ours and they, obviously charge a little bit more than what we charge um, for some items, but there's a lot from our list that's missing. Um, and it just leaves some gaps for for us to be not as profitable as we should be because it sounds like there's um, room for us to be not breaking even if on how things are run. Gotcha. Obviously, we're not doing this to make a million bucks, but we don't want to put ourselves in the hole. Correct. Um, yeah, we'll have to review that a little bit more. Um, do put on the website that the Recycling Center is open yes. this Saturday and Sunday. Um, maybe ask Chief Perone to put it up on the electronic board as well. That's by the playing field. Um, that would be great. See if you can't do that special for us this time. Yeah, people were asking on Hub, the Facebook, I don't know, page, <laughs> one of the, uh -huh. the unofficial town the blog unofficial forum. Ones. And uh, that's when I texted you, Kathy, and asked because I couldn't find it right away on my phone. So I posted right. there as well. I'll make sure Ryan okay. stuff on our town Facebook too. Okay. Yeah, that would be great. Electricity? I heard um, good things maybe. So... Uh, I spoke with Ken because I didn't get his email. Did you get it, Mallory? I've not gotten an email from Ken. All right. Okay. So we were playing phone tag for a couple days. Um, I got, I called him this morning, got his email, but that's as far as it went. I didn't, I was going to send him an email from my email address so that he could then reply with the documents that he obtained uh, that should be um, acceptable to um, National Grid. Um, I haven't seen the documents yet. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. So I'm hoping that before the July Recycling Center days, um, we'll have electricity in by then. Okay. And uh, he sent them to me to the wrong address that I thought he'd copied you to. So I'm going to forward them. I got them right before the meeting. Yeah, I don't, unless I went to a junk box, I did not get anything. No, 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 no. I said I uh -oh. thought. Uh -oh. okay. <laughs> At first glance that he copied it, yeah, it. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me with the way the email system has been working, so. <laughs> well, you should have it momentarily. I'll appreciate it. But as it turned out, it, it looked like the um, the Worcester, was it the Register of Deeds, looked it up and found that the deed for that particular property 
was numbered sequentially with the property next door for DPW. And because of that, he thinks that it was mis um, filed in, a diff in the wrong book. So he, if you look in the GIS system, it wouldn't be in the right book order. It was only when he stepped back and looked at every property owned by the town that he was able to find those two in sequence with the two different addresses. Holy moly. Mm -hmm. Wow. George? Huh? Scott Eady. Yeah, who did that search? Good question. Scott Eady, assistant registrar. That is, cr I'm going to forward it to National Grid right now. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And tell them we want electric hooked up. Right. Yep. So he had to step back and look at all records where the town of Hubbardston was the owner, found another book and page with the corresponding plan that matched up the maps and address of the highway department um, and the recycle center lot. Um, and then this is the numbers are very similar and were probably recorded the same day, which might have led to the confusion. So anybody looking in the GIS system would normally look at a parcel and then drill in from that location. And because it wasn't assigned to the right book and page and therefore the right address would never have been found. Wow. Kate, did so, you request that search? No, um, I actually had called Ken Sutherland to ask about, you know, like he was aware of the situation, obviously. And I said, you know, I know you don't have a lot of experience with like solar, but like if we absolutely cannot get this hooked up through National Grid, what would be the recourse? Like, could we hook up a solar panel? What does that look like? And he said, I have no idea. I'd have to research it. He says, I can't imagine it would be hugely cost prohibitive, but I don't understand because for them to ever have service, they had to have a deed at some point. He goes, so the deed has to be there. He's like, let me call the, you know, the, the registrar in the registrar in um, Worcester because he, he happens to know him, has worked with him before. He's like, he could, you know, I know somebody could probably find it. And uh, so he followed up. So the electrician who we hired to do the job uh, chased down the paperwork for us through a connection he had, which was great. My mind is right. honestly blown. Yeah. yeah. That person yeah. deserves a prize or a muffin basket or something. Yeah. I I'll... think you're right. We'll have to figure that out. <laughs> yes. And yeah. do that. He's a he's a good guy. He's a, when we go snowmobiling together next, I'll buy him a cocoa for everybody from everybody on the board off the books. Yeah. I'll spend the fifty <laughs> cents at the store. <laughs> yeah. That's an nice expensive title search. That's a great thing to do. Uh, yeah, that was a huge, nice, nice, nice thing to call in a favor for us. So it was good. So hopefully that'll get straightened out. Thank well, you. maybe it went to junk mail and I didn't find it there. You know, I just sent, I just it. sent it, so it'll probably take a minute to a ladybug. Okay, but maybe Ken's email to me went oh. somewhere that I didn't search for it. Yeah, because like, I, yeah, Cause I mean, I didn't I, get it. when I talked to him, he said he had sent it already, but he would forward it to right. me, so I don't know. Okay, good. Awesome. I'm glad you got a copy of it. Thank you, Kate. No problem. All right, so condos, large system Title V compliance under old business. So I asked the Board of Assessors, because we had been speaking of um, been found the regulation where every three years, all the condos need to be tested, um, inspected, and reports given to us. So what I did is instead of us trying to just off the top of our heads, um, see which condos we, were, we knew, I asked the Board of Assessors or the um, Assessor's Assistant just to get me a printout of every condo or any parcel of land that they code as a condo in town. Um, so that was an attachment you saw. There's about two or three pages of them. And I just got that yesterday afternoon. So my plan is to break them down into groups, look for the president of the association, the association's address, get a standard lettered out, just saying, hey, we're looking for a copy of your most recent Title V inspection reports for all the units, and then go from there. Cool. Excellent. Reference that state, that state. Statue oh, yeah, I'll, I'll put the code when I write the letter. I'll make sure to quote code. Okay, thank you. Excellent. Anything more on the condos title five? Um, new business, the budget spreadsheet. So I have attached a copy of the budget spreadsheet. The only thing that's on there is we um, the bill for Matt Hopkinson for doing those reviews. We kind of spoke about it last meeting. I was able to submit it. 
Um, on the page, there is a bell for Gateway, but that's coming from conservation, so that's not us. Um, attached to the financial report is also a copy of our statement from MPHN, which just shows that we do not owe them any money as of right now. So that's good. Excellent. Any other questions? On no. the budget. Cool. All right. And then I just, on the unexpected subjects, we just have one. Um, mm -hmm. In your packet of attachments, the end of year plan came from Jill Peterson, who is the uh, principal, I think, over at the yes. school. And she yes. was very concerned about, you know, ending the year for the students who'd be moving on out of the um, elementary school and into the middle school um, and all that good stuff. So she just sent over their plans on how they're looking to um, wrap things up for everyone and the events are looking to that they're looking to do and they just wanted us to take a look at it see if there's any comments you wanted to insert um, or give them their blessing um i read that email from jill and looked at everything and it's following all the guidelines and the way they're going to hand out little bags as the cars drive through with their names on it each bag and um for their end of year uh, activity through the parking lot and so on and so forth. It's, it's a similar activity that they do every year, but it's just been modified to meet the COVID standards. And um, it looks clean and effective and should be fine. Mm -hmm. A lot of schools are doing it like that. Um, yeah. I had the chance to attend a graduation and where they just kind of corralled us like cows and through different stations so you can see your senior run across the stage grab his diploma and snap a photo it was so strange i feel so sorry for these kids but it looks like jill's put together a nice way to wrap it up for them great can we have a motion to accept the plan or is there any other discussion first a motion i make a, i second the motion all right all in favor colleen aye Kathy? Aye. Ben? Yes. Kate? Yes. All right. Any other subjects or items to discuss from the board? Oh, just one quick one that just popped in my head. So um, I had gotten a call from a, the neighbor in regards to outdoor wood burning stove, mm. um, but it's taken care of. So there was a complaint that they were still using it out of season. Kathy drove by, they put their cap on. So almost we got anything else. Yeah. Good. Should go. Very good. Yeah, the um, one on uh, Hale Road. Yep. Uh, Mr. Uh, so, Mr. Sanborn, he, um, we were going to give him a letter with a fine, but when I went by, he'd already put a, a lid over the exhaust pipe of the stove, so he's not using it. Okay. So, I didn't present the letter because he was already in compliance. Very good. And, um, one other thing, going back to the electricity at the Recycle Center, um, I don't know if we'd taken any additional steps with the DPW in the trench and the workaround. So if we have, can somebody put the kibosh on that and say, no, 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 stop, stop, stop? No, we haven't moved forward with anything with them. Oh we goodness. were just kind of waiting to see what came from it. So okay. we are good right now. All right. Any other topics? We have to pick our next meeting date. Ah, uh, the meeting date. Um, Look at my calendar. I think we're going to have to do a Thursday because isn't the 30th the election day as well? Like the town meetings the 23rd or 24th if it rains. And I thought June 30th was supposed to be election day, if I'm not mistaken. I think you're right. And I therefore, know. we probably would be wise to maybe do so the fourth week. We would have normally had it on Tuesday, June 23rd. Maybe we can have it on Thursday, June 25th. Would that work for everyone? That would work for me. I'm good with it. Well, unless we have any pressing issues, I'd suggest we wait it another week because we'll have a new member joining us at the following after the election. Uh, I mean, if we have business, we have to conduct that something, but it doesn't seem like we have anything pressing that couldn't wait 
for the new member to join us. Yeah, depending though, we have a lot of open plans. Yeah, there's a lot of, um, like the Title V that was passed, that was a part of the attachments. Um, by the way, uh, Mallory, that looks fine. Um, we sh I should say that I've reviewed it and it looks okay. Um, what place was that where? That address was 155 Williamsville Road. Oh yeah, I'm gonna add that to unexpected because that came in yesterday while well Mallory, you're breaking up. Can anybody else hear, hear Mallory? No. No. Oh, shoot. Lost y'all. Yep, got it now. Yeah. You're yeah. back. Okay. <laughs> the 26th at, or 25th at 6.30, maybe we just do a abbreviated agenda if we don't want to have a full meeting that night and then but I think that we have a lot of like you said a lot of pending title five yeah I think we do too so Thursday the 25th yep yep Thursday the 25th yep okay cool and with that I'll take a motion for adjournment if anybody's interested in making one. I do. Uh, can I ask I one question before we oh, do it? Okay. Sure. sure. Have they made any regulations or made any, any um, decisions on when we can resume public meetings? No, I haven't anything yet. No, I mean, I'm, my assumption would be it would be post phase three or something or at the end of phase three. Yeah, town hall's not even open for appointments yet, so. Okay, just wondering if anybody had any sense of when we're going to get back together on these meetings. I know, I wish. I know. Well, the other thing is the, so right now, let's say even if they allowed it now, we'd have to move to a different location because we need to be able to be, you know, socially distant, wearing masks, et cetera. Um, and the room we are in isn't big enough for that. I don't know that many rooms that we even have in town are. Well, we know. use a rec field. Yes, we could all risk West Nile virus for for town <laughs> safety. <laughs> 6.30 at night, I'll meet you on the rec field, Ben. I'll be the one smelling like DEET. Oh, the so basketball is not they're being they're used. In, insects, masks, and things. Gonna... <laughs> I'll, I'll show up looking like um one of the Teletubbies in a full suit. Be fine. Yeah, we'll wear beehive suits, you know? Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, so I did have uh, Ryan move the town meeting up to 6 p.m. because of mosquitoes. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else on unexpected subjects? Then I'll make the motion to adjourn. All right. I'll second. <laughs> All in favor? Um, aye, yes. Aye. Aye, yes.